I always felt like, oh, I have the next high, I have the next enlightenment and the next revelation about some shadow part of myself. And then like two days later, I would feel myself depressed again. I would feel like I crying and I was like, oh yeah, the next layer of my energy is like clearing right now. Oh, it's because of the moon mm -hmm. right now in Pisces. And oh, I, was so, I was so into astrology and all of that stuff, but I still felt the pain. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Raised and Redeemed podcast and YouTube channel. I'm your host, Michaela Nikolenko, and I started this show after finally finding my home in Christ. I grew up in a home with lots of abuse and addiction where Christianity became something that repelled me. I spent my early adulthood seeking God in other religions, tarot cards, psychedelics, and even myself. I didn't realize how much hell I had pulled up into my life until I came face to face with the dark side of the spirit world and Jesus fought hard to save me. Now I live to serve his will and host a platform where others can share their story too. If you're looking for a show that talks about real things and provides encouragement for those who have been to the dark side and back, this is the show for you. Make sure to rate, subscribe, and share this show with anyone that you feel might be encouraged by it too. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Raised and Redeemed family. Hey you guys, and welcome back to the Raised and Redeemed podcast and YouTube channel. I'm your host, Michaela Nikolenko, and today I have on Miriam Holloway, who shares her story of being saved from the new age. After some traumatic loss in childhood experiences, Miriam sought hope in the gym, success, relationships, and even new age practices. It was on an ayahuasca trip that she saw the demonic for the first time and realized who the source really was to these practices. Jesus began to set her apart, give her hope for her despair, and show her the abundant life he had in store for her if she would lay her life down and accept him as her Lord and Savior. Without further ado, let's get on to the show. Okay, well, thank you for being on the show today, Miriam. Um, I'm glad that you would be on. So just so the listeners know, we met because we have a similar story of being saved from the New Age. And you had me on your channel, and so now I'm having you here to share your version, your side of the story, too. Mm -hmm. So as much as you'd be willing to share, the, the way it goes is what led you into the New Age lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, and what, what was that like for you, and then how did Jesus save you from it, what in your life has changed since then, and then what your advice would be to your old self, the self then. So. We'll just start from from the start as much as you'd like to share of of how you got into that lifestyle, what led you into to seeking God in that kind of way. Yeah, I think um, the most people can relate is trauma. Most of the time, trauma leads you into the new age. Um, when I was growing up, I, I was growing up uh, Roman Catholic, so I even would go to church and. I would always know Jesus, but never had a, a relationship with Jesus. So, but I never liked going to church. And even when I was young, I always felt alone. I always felt abandoned. Like um, I got rejected a lot in the kindergarten. Then in school, I got bullied. And um, and the relationship with my mother was also pretty toxic. And I never felt loved, like unconditional love. And um, I always felt something was wrong with me because people would tell me this way. So I always felt so lost and so alone in this world. So when I was little, I was even depressed and kind of like, I always had dark thoughts and like, I always felt sad and like just lonely. So um, when I was like 13 or 14, I got really rebellious against my mother. And, uh, and you know, they, when there's not God's order in a family, like having God on in the first place and a man, a godly husband and like a wife and then children. My mom was kind of like at the top of like being dominant. There was like no Jesus involved in the, as a foundation in our family. And I got rebellious against my mother. So when I was 13, 14 around, I started drinking. I started smoking weed. I dyed my hair like black. <laughs> I, got a sep I got a septum secretly wow. uh, in a tunnel. Um, like a big one, like like one centimeter. Like oh, I would well, I would listen to like this death hardcore metal music. Okay. I was like being around the wrong people who had like a really bad influence on me. So um, that was the beginning of like I was kind of like 
looking for validation, looking for love in the world. Yeah. And um, yeah, and and when I was 17, I was 17 or 18, I, there was kind of like a positive switch in my life. I started going to the gym. So I found the gym as my anchor in my life. So at the first time, I really, for the first time in my life, I felt so empowered. I felt so confident in myself, but I just realized now there was more like this um, fake confidence of like feeling so good because you get validation from the outside because you grew some muscles and then you get I got so much attention because of that back in the day when I was at school so I felt so good and I felt so for the first time I felt so good in myself but it was just I was so dependent on it so it was like really like an addiction like it was so extreme so I always had to go to the gym otherwise I would get angry I was always feeling my nervous system since I, uh, like um before crisis it was always like on fight and um, fight and flight model so yeah. Yeah. I always had internal unrest and I would compensate with you know like learning like my my schedule was all, always full like I was always working I was always doing something then I would go to the gym I was always like doing something so I was never able to do nothing I was there was always some kind of internal unrest because of all the trauma I had with my mother and the way I grew up so um the gym was my anchor and then I decided because around 18, my mother got diagnosed with cancer. And just the thought of like, oh, my mother might die was just, it was so traumatizing, but I kind of like blended out and I just focused more on, on um, my A-levels because then I decided, okay, I'm going to study medicine. I'm going to become a doctor and oncologist. I'm going to save people's lives. So this is also like always the intention of people in the new age we always have good intentions, you know, we want to help people, we have our trauma, and then we, we have so much um, compassion, so much empathy for other people. So we're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I want to help other people because I feel the pain. So yes, this is the first time when I started, okay, um, I'm gonna become a doctor. So I always try to, you know, find security in the world. So I thought like, okay, I'm gonna become a doctor, then I'm gonna earn a lot of money, I'm gonna help people. So I, was, I had kind of like my plan in my head. And um, and then I kind of, um, how do you say it? When I had my math orals, I kind of totally screwed up <laughs> mm. and I didn't get into university. So I had to do like an extra test and then I went to Australia. So, so I thought, okay, I'm just going to go like for a year or six months to Australia. And then after that, maybe I can go to university. So um, yeah, I went to Australia and yeah, but a lot of things happened there like I got sick I got I had no like real diagnosis but I know I just had my carditis like a virus in my heart because I was so in such a bad place yeah. in such a bad place and this was always my biggest fear to become sick because anytime I would get sick I couldn't go to the gym mm -hmm. I couldn't go to the gym like <laughs> mentally like seriously mentally I would freak out like mentally I was in such a bad place always in my life so gym was my only anchor my only thing that gave me some kind of hope or like calmness in my life let's say that and um so and the other thing is like the state of my mother like the condition of my mother became worse then like my grand aunt died in the um, during the time when I was in Australia then um I was sick and I couldn't go to the gym and then but because I wouldn't listen to my body I, I, I went to the gym though and but this was the first time I went to the gym and after that I had no like it didn't give me anything anymore Mm. And so like I was so hopeless because like okay the gym was the only thing that really gave me gave me a good feeling like it really made me brought me some joy in my life it was the first time it didn't give me anything at all so I felt so empty after and I was so shocked kind of like so it's like okay I kind of losing kind of like everything right now in my life I just felt like it was like I had like all my life would just fall apart and then I would find out um in I would find out that I wouldn't get into university, like I failed the test. And then there was another thing. Um, I did couch surfing because Sydney is so expensive. And then I was like, okay, I was there with a friend. Let's do let's do some couch surfing. So we don't have to pay like for a hostel. It's yeah. so expensive. And um, we stayed at a guy's place. It was like, I think he was around 42 or 44 at that time. And I straight from the beginning, I was always sensitive. I always had a good in intuition and I, straight from the beginning I felt like there was something off with this guy but I was like no I'm sick right now and um, I can't afford a hostel right now and like all of this is too much let's just say it his, his place for like three or four days and 
um, then one night I had free and my my friend was working and um, in the middle and in, um, in the city in, in Sydney I got a panic attack for the first time in my life and I totally freaked out mentally and I knew that he was about to pick me up at the train station I had like really a gut feeling of like oh tonight something worse is gonna happen uh, something bad is gonna happen so I would just text everyone like to have uh, time tonight. Let's hang out. Let's do something because I didn't want to be alone with this guy in the house mm -hmm. because even before he would touch me and like, like sexually touch me. And, but I like before Christ, I was never able to really set boundaries. Like I was so addicted to getting validation or some kind of attention. So I would, I wasn't able to say no and like to tell him that I was wrong or like to stop it. Like people could just like walk on me and do whatever they wanted to. So That night, um, when I came home, like he started texting me, like, "Do you want to make some easy two hundred dollars right now?" And I was, I, I was reading the message. I got like my heart was racing, and I got anxiety, and I was just telling him no to stop. And he would keep on going, like, "Oh, he's naked right now. He's under the shower." And if I want to join him, and I was just going around in a room in circles, and I had really like this scenario of like he's coming in my room, he's gonna rape me or kill me, and I have like this fear of death, like so. It was like the worst thing I ever like experienced. I don't call it ayahuasca as well, but yeah, it was like yeah. really, it was really traumatizing. And then, um, thank God, nothing has happened. But that night, I um, I couldn't sleep anymore. It's like when you're like driving with a car, and like the engine is still hot, and you stop the car, but it's still hot. Like it, I was so I had so much internal unrest. I it just yeah. couldn't sleep anymore. I was awake for 24 hours, and I was still sick. And then I decided, oh, yeah, I have to work tomorrow. So I'm going to work other because I was afraid otherwise they're going to um, fire me. So I was like, oh, I have to go to the job. I had like a double shift of like 12 hours. So I was sick. <laughs> I just had a traumatizing experience. Yeah. Everything was just falling apart and I would still go to work, although my body was so I, I was so sick still. And I went to work and I was awake for more than 24 hours. And when I came back home, I was like, okay, I have to sleep now. And there was a second night I couldn't sleep. And then I had like um, suicidal thoughts, like creeping in of like, oh, my life doesn't make any sense anymore. Everything is too hard. And I, mm -hmm. I was, I was, I had no, no, um, um, no more energy to even get up or to do anything, to shower, like to pretty much everything was just like, like it didn't make any sense to me anymore. And and um, another friend we had um, was really um, uh, afraid, and he like took me to the psychologist and they diagnosed me like like um, with depression and PTSD and stuff like that and I got like some prescription to sleep and then um, I was able to sleep again but still like all of these thoughts of like this killing thoughts and like creeped, yeah. on, creeped in again so I went to the mental health clinic for one month in Australia so I was just turning 20 in Australia in a mental health clinic wow. in a psychic ward with like really crazy people who would talk to themselves or have like I don't know like the craziest mental stuff you can have. And I was just there being suicidal. And um, yeah, it was like really crazy. Looking back right now, it's like five, no, six years almost. It's like, wow. <laughs> like, like God was always with me. Like looking back right now, it's like we, he really had his hands on me because yeah, I could have killed myself, but I didn't. So um, yeah, then Thank God I had a health insurance and my sister arranged everything for me, like to bring a doctor and um, 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 paramedic to from Germany to Australia to pick me up because I couldn't oh. fly by myself. And I would fly even Emirates business or first class back home. I couldn't enjoy it because, you know, um, but it was like because I had so much anxiety around people that I had to be just by myself with the doctor. So they would fly me back home. I would still go into like um, into um like not psychologist but you know it's like a clinic where you just go for, for, from the morning till the evening and then you go back home is that like outpatient maybe yeah yeah I was still going there but the condition with my mother is what got worse in Germany and even mm -hmm. like mentally she was like kind of putting pressure on me she was abandoning me again and kind of rejected me again telling me oh I should get um, better by now otherwise she's gonna put me into a um, psychic ward again so she would just mm -hmm. have no understanding so she would even like tell me that something's wrong with me and I just felt like so like so hopeless again because I had all these nights I had insomnia still like for weeks like I couldn't sleep I had nightmares and um, mm -hmm. 
I had all this internal unrest and the suicidal thoughts still. I was like, okay, I, I, I told myself I'm not going to get healthy. If I'm not going to get better in the next six months, I'm going to jump from a bridge. Or like I had my plans in my head. And, but then someone messaged me on, on Facebook telling me about like, um, an online business, like network marketing, if I want to do yeah. <laughs> network marketing. <laughs> and was, like the first hope in my life again, like some kind of anchor of like, oh, maybe I can, you know, become successful now. Maybe then this is going to change my life because I was always looking for something on the outside, like for a solution. Yes. So there was really like a turning point again in a positive way. So I started doing network marketing, like, and then, you know, I got all of this validation again, all of this praise, you know, you get into this like group of people and they're all going to, yeah. you know, place you and you get ranks, you know, you get recognition because you kind of achieved a rank in the, in the company. And so, yeah, I was feeling like super high again of like, yeah, woo, and I uh, was earning money and like passive income and I was traveling a lot. And then, I got like a lot in like relationships because I was so addicted to getting like love from people and like having a boyfriend. So I was always kind of like in relationships, but it never worked out. Like I was never able to receive love. Like every time like someone like really loved me, I just had so much pain in my heart because the pain I always had, like since I was a little child, like I always had pain in my heart. But when we someone really showed me love, I just got so much anxiety. So it always like split up up after like two or three months and yeah. with people who um who didn't love me or rejected me I felt attracted so I was always like looking for the bad guys I always felt like oh I want this this person who's like super um emotionally unavailable yeah <laughs> so we felt attracted to those kind of guys and um yeah and during that time my mother died then I was I was just turning 21 my mother died and um I was prepared. I knew that she would die, but it was really, it was really painful. But after that, I was just so focused on, you know, doing business, doing career. You know, if you have some people who get really successful is because of their trauma, because they got so ambitious and they so, you so um, identify yourself with your performance and how much you work, then you kind of like compensate and like doing a lot and like being, becoming successful. So I kind of used that to like work even more and I was traveling a lot like now five years ago like I was in, in in Florida and I was just traveling and I was in Miami and LA and Las Vegas and I would go to Philippines I was just always traveling and going around and but I always felt like the the emptiness inside so I was never fulfilled that like there was always something missing and now I know it was always Jesus yeah. and so there was always something missing and um when I realized in my old company, you know, I was burned out because you would, you have to work so much, but you get paid not really well for that. So I yeah, literally, <laughs> so I switched the company and um, I got into like crypto company. And until this day, I, I love that company. Like I would still refer people if they want to do network, you have to join that company. So yeah. um, I joined that one and I made so much money with cryptocurrency and trading and um but even after, like, I think it was a year, even after that, I always felt, I still felt empty. I was like, okay, now I was even earning more money. But there was a part of me again, like, I feel so empty. Like, relationships are not going to fulfill you. Like, money is not going to fulfill you. Validation is not going to fulfill you. And I don't know. And then, you know, when I was young, I tried alcohol. So I knew that drugs also wouldn't do it. And I was like, okay. Now I'm going to go uh, deep into spirituality of like, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm just, you know, because of passive income and I was so great, uh, grateful for that. I was like, okay, I'm grateful for that company and I have this passive income. So now I'm just going to focus on, you know, healing. So yeah. like I would go like really deep into the neo age of like doing meditation every day, healing your chakras, doing yoga, like yoga I even started when I was 18. But um, like last year, before I came to Christ, I was doing yoga every day, almost like two times per day. And I was doing yoga and I was meditating. And then um, last year I did a Reiki certificate because I always felt like, oh, my hands are healing. So I have to do yeah. like the, uh, uh, I have to do my Reiki master and everything. And then I, I did so much. I have to just, uh, I did hypnosis, hypnosis, like I pay like more than 1000, like for some kind of like for some hypnosis sessions, like because I was always feeling like there's so much pain in me and I just wanted to get rid of it because of yes. felt like a burden on me and I, because of your perception, you know, when you're so now I know it's like demonic influence, you know, I was really yeah. a child of the devil. And, um, but also so, Miriam, like you, you really do have 
these gifts, right? But Satan hijacks them and uses them for his kingdom with things like Reiki and meditation. But it's like laying on the hands, like God created that. Like, like yeah. that's actually real, but like Satan hijacks it and then uses it in practices like new age practices. Yeah, it's it's all it's all so twisted. Yeah, yeah. you know, now you can um um, do the like uh, laying off uh, your hands and in the name of Jesus and you can yes, heal. Exactly. Like the energy. It's always about the universe, worshiping the universe, but not its creator. So um yeah, I was like deep into everything. I was deep into breath work. So I always had to do breath work in order to feel some kind of peace. And it was it was helping. And like even some things in the new age, like I would say like this psychology part, there's nothing bad about it like you learn a lot about your thoughts you know like having negative or positive thoughts and not identifying yourself with the thoughts but if you have deep trauma you just learn so much mentally and but it's not really working you have so much on your mind so much knowledge and so much wisdom but it's not like the pain was still in my heart like although I did so many like inner child meditations I would go back into the memories but I would always just kind of like re-traumatizing myself like going back and trying, like, I was always like, okay, I found out, you know, about my mother. Then I was like, okay, I understand now she had pain. That's why like she um, re projected that on me. So I was like, okay, I understand that this has not, and this was not, nothing about me. That was not my fault. So I, I would also always understand all of the things, but still the pain and the empathy was still there. So it's like, like, it's yeah. never enough. There's so much, like, to have a buffet of so many things in the new age. You can do this, then you can do crystal healing, and then you can do Reiki, and then you can do then you can do tarot cards. And then I thought, like, oh, yeah, um, astrology is give, giving me some kind of power. Now I know how to heal myself and what's going to come in the future. So you try to crest on some, like, security on these concepts, and it yes. gives you a little bit, but it's never fulfilling. Like, it's yeah. never... You're still seeking. If you're honest to yourself, you're still seeking and you're not satisfied. Because that you're relational not... void is still there. That because we right were designed for that relationship with God, and that that void is still there, no matter how many healing practices we learn. It's still there, and it's always gonna come back. I always felt like, oh, I have the next high, I have the next enlightenment, and the next revelation about some shadow part of myself, and then like two days later I would feel myself depressed again I would feel like I crying and I was like oh yeah the next layer of my energy is like clearing right now oh it's because of the moon mm -hmm. right now in Pisces and oh, I, was so, I was so into astrology and all of that stuff but I still felt the pain although I was aware of everything I was like why is it not going away and then I was like okay now I'm gonna go for the hard things I'm gonna do ayahuasca because you know, I saw so many like um, um, the kind of testimonies on YouTube about ayahuasca and people doing it. I was like, okay, this must be so healing. And then after that, I'm be happy, like finally happy again. And then I can finally heal people from a full cup, you know, because I always felt like I was helping people because it gave me something, gave me something. I was just helping so that I would feel good. Oh, I'm helping other people. I'm a good person, you know. Yeah. And uh, so last year I would go to Costa Rica and to Mexico to do ayahuasca and to do DMT. And um, yeah, it was like the worst experience I ever had on psychedelics. It was so traumatic. Like I was literally in hell doing ayahuasca. I would see demons, but yeah, not bad, but it's, it was, it was traumatizing. It was so terrifying. It was, I felt so helpless and um yeah I, you have to feel it's like an endless loop you have to it's like the same in the new age it's like an endless hamster wheel but the the same was when you're in hell when you're in hell hell is so real like you, yeah. you just know you you're always going to be there and it's never ending and it was the, yeah. the worst like no one can ever understand if you never did this like what it was like it was so it yeah. was so bad and after that I questioned for the first time I questioned all of that stuff like shamanism and like all of this new age um like healing practices I was like is this re really healing because after that I would go to a, like a shaman again to pay like 50 bucks to get like kind of like a cleansing again and then I would feel good for a day and after that I would feel so terrified again so much anxiety and I had a psychosis I had sleep paralysis and then I would go to another 
one that came at my place with his wife. They would do like an energy healing massage on me for like $150 for three hours. And then they put like happy in my nose and to connect yeah. me with the spirit guides. And I was crying so much. And after that, I, I got worse mentally. And I was like, oh, I'm paying so much to people. And I think like they're helping me, but I felt like it got worse. And I was like, I was, I don't know. I was just frustrated because I was like, I it kind of like tried everything in my life right now and nothing is really helping. I feel like I'm just spending my money to get even worse mentally. So um, that's what I love about your testimony of doing ayahuasca where you realized because the shamans were telling you like, oh, you're healing, you're, you're healing your shadow self, like your shadow self is coming up. You saw when you were on ayahuasca, it wasn't you you saw the demons, you knew that it wasn't, it wasn't something in you coming up that was making you feel terrible. It wasn't this shadow self you were working through. You saw during that experience that it was actually demons tormenting you and all these people around you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the shaman would tell me, oh, this is your ancestral healing right now. Um, you do have to do a family constellation. So I also, I would also do this like I would also go like one week after the ayahuasca to a family constellation. I always paid money for that, but it didn't work. Like nothing has changed in my life or anything yeah. profound happened. But yeah, I could see that like after I think it was like into this like really dark horror trip for like seven or eight hours. And after that, I realized, oh, this is not me. So then I realized, oh, like then I felt um, really peaceful for the first time in, in this trip. I felt like, oh, this 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 wasn't me because all the people were throwing up and I was like I I'm, I was not for throwing up and I was asking myself is something wrong with me I also have to purge and I felt like I also need to purge but I didn't need to purge mm. so after the trip like when it got like um, how do you say it like after eight or nine 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 hours it's like when it gets wearing less. off yeah it's when it's wearing off I felt like oh this this wasn't me so I felt like oh I'm safe again because I could see it was on the outside all these demons and I was so afraid. So I was like, okay, this has nothing to do with me. But still after that, I had sleep paralysis. I was like sweating, sweating like for for hours. And every time when I would fell asleep, I could feel my soul leaving my body. And I didn't even want to do it. It was like doing astral projection without wanting to do it. And I couldn't feel my body anymore. Like I couldn't feel the ground. I was so afraid. And um, yeah, and I had a lot of fights in that time with my ex-boyfriend during the day. And um so I would go back to Australia and uh, Australia. I would go back to uh, Germany and you would go back to Austria. And um, when, I, when I was um, at home again, I got so much anxiety because I was alone for my for the first time because we would always be together like 20 for seven. We would always be say, together because I was not able to be by myself at all. Yeah. But then I was at myself after the ayahuasca. So back home, I had more sleep paralysis, like really nightmares of like people um like uh, following me in the dream and I w would wake up with heart race and I couldn't move for minutes so I was then a friend of mine like now sister Christ she sent me some testimonies about how that yoga is demonic and how the new age is actually um counterfeit and that's all of the devil and I would watch those stuff and I would get convicted immediately mm. and then I got even more attacked like from all of this nice angel spirits were, were um uh, when I thought they were actually helping me, but then all of the spirits were just attacking me. They got mad. So, <laughs> they were yeah, they got mad because I was like, oh, maybe there's something about Jesus. So yeah. uh, then I would call my ex and he was like, no, no, you know, look, my 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 my, my uncle is also doing astrology and he's also meditating. He's so, such a peaceful man. Do you think he has demons? So we kind of like argue about this. Is yoga, yoga really demonic? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I would just ignore it. But deep down, I just knew that was like a seed's planet. Hey, you guys, if you're in a relationship and trying to figure out if he's the one, or maybe you're recently single and taking a step back to figure out how to best go about finding the one, I have the ebook for you. Head over to the link in my bio or in the comment section from wherever you're listening to find my latest ebook, How to Know If He's the One. In this ebook, I share the worst of my relational mistakes and how Jesus finally showed me there was a better way. Gradually, he began to mend my heart, and I know he will do the same for you too. You know that feeling when you're talking to someone just to to get approval because you know they're on your side? Because yeah. deep down, I knew there was something you know wrong about this new age and about all, all the healing stuff, but yeah. I just knew I could call my ex. He would just confirm me, 
no, no, you can just keep on doing it. So yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. so I had kind of like some peace about it again, but still I had those attacks, right? So, but, you know, I would get even deeper into doing yoga and doing meditation every day. And I had my tobacco, like my happy, I would just do it every day. I got, got really addicted to that. And to go like, who to kind of like to be in other realms and atmosphere. So, um, yeah, and I would start my, you know, healing business, kind of like doing coaching and doing crystal healing. And um, yeah, and I would just go and do that for a month until this year in April. Um, I got again, like on some pages on Instagram. Um, I think, yeah, her name is Heather telling, you know, new um ex-vegan and new ager to jesus and i was like okay so i was really curious because on that day i felt so empty again there was a morning i can't remember i woke up this morning i felt so like i don't even know what to do with my life i felt just so empty again i felt so yeah because in that in during that time i would just sleep for 10 or 12 hours i had no purpose in life re- anymore like i didn't feel alive at all yeah. and so i would just you know go on instagram just checking out some stories and i would just find her page and then I would follow her and you know Instagram recommends me some other (laughs) Jesus followers so I would go that was just and then when uh, I would find a sister in Christ called Christine and I would like um, see her page about telling about Jesus and about the new age deception so I was like so open for it I was so open for it I would just text her the whole day like we would text for days and I would ask so many questions because I was so confused the moment you decide you want to go to Jesus you get so you get so (laughs) so because Out of you, like, doesn't want to believe that you got con- deceived. Like, you don't want to admit that you, you that you've been lied to and you lied to other people for years. And my identity, you know, my whole identity was, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I, you know, I do yoga, I do Reiki, I do astrology. Um, you know, I'm a Leo and this and that. You know, so ah. so with all of that stuff with my sign and my moon sign and everything it's an identity crisis when you <laughs> realize that it's all a lie you're like wait yeah, that's the real ego death like like denying yourself and following jesus you know like yeah. to really give your life to christ that's that's the real ego death so um yeah i got so convicted of that and um but i was still in the relationship with my ex and things got really worse between us and um yeah I've always, i always wanted to break up but we were just so codependent and was so toxic and i just couldn't leave him because i was so afraid to be alone and yeah but he was like really treating me in a bad way and so but i knew that i had to let this go and when i when i finally broke up when i really turned myself like 100% to jesus even before that i prayed yeah and before that i prayed so before I would break up, like I think it was two or three weeks ago, I, I did a prayer and I asked Jesus to show me the truth. Like for the first time, I was like, okay, God, I'm open now. Please show me the truth. I am I am I I don't know what to do anymore. I feel so empty. I I feel so frustrated. I feel so depressed. And all of a sudden there was a presence in my room. Like it was like and like I could just see it. Like I could just see how demonic everything was. Like nobody would tell me. I would just I would go upstairs in my room and I would just see the tarot cards. I was like, I have to get rid of it. So I would burn it. I would burn all my ekatole, all my spiritual books. I would just burn them. And um, I had like mushrooms in the day and I was just about to do mushrooms. <laughs> and I would just throw them in the river and get rid of my chape, my, my expensive, you know, tobacco. I would just get rid of all of it. Like my Reiki certificate, I just burned. And then, you know, I received the Holy Spirit and something like inside of me has changed, but I was still in the relationship though. That So that was kind of like um, holding me apart from really getting to God, like 100%. So um, I had to break up and then I really, like, I really um, received like God's love and like the presence of Jesus. It was so profound. Like since that day, everything has changed for me. Now looking back for a month, like he delivered me from like instant like like for my anxiety for my panic I had from um all the pain I had in my heart like I was I was crying so much but this time this crying was so I, I enjoyed it so much it was different from before when before I was crying I was like there was like no end to it I would just feel so yeah. alone when I then when I cried because I had this godly sorrow because I got so convicted of what I was doing or was wrong I got so convicted like how how much I lived in sin that I'm a sinner and that I then I'm nothing without Jesus. Like when I got convicted, I cried so much to God, but I felt this presence in my room, this peace. Like it was kind of like scary a little bit, but in a positive way. It was yeah. so much 
truth. And like my mind was so clear for the first time in my life. And I was like, wow, I didn't meditate to do this, uh, to get there. I didn't do yoga to get there. I didn't work, I, like, I didn't do enough shadow work. I was like, wow, <laughs> it's just for free, you know, like, like giving totally up your pride and your arrogance and your like self-righteousness of thinking like, oh, I know better because in the new age, you identify your truth because of your emotions or because of your what you experience it's like yeah but i'm feeling this way and it feels good so it's my truth but yes. your truth is never the same because it's always changing yes but jesus is the same yesterday today and tomorrow so with jesus you have for the first time like a foundation so yeah looking back right now it's like i have so much peace in my life and i feel so much joy like even when i'm just talking about jesus it's like mm-hmm. amazing I feel so much love. And for the first time, I'm able to receive love and to just give love, like, unconditionally. And I don't feel that anymore. Like, I really had the spirit of rejection in me, like, the spirit of rejection I had and the spirit of fear. And when people attack me, it's like, I don't even get offended, like, nothing at all. I just pray for them and I just wish them, like, I don't feel, like, personally attacked or triggered or anything anymore. Before that, I would always, like, get sucked up so much in discussions or, like, in arguments or would feel abandoned or now it's like no you know I, I don't know I have so much love now that I, it's like it's just I don't know it doesn't um attack me any or like um um, um affect me anymore in my life yeah and, like when you know that you know the truth like you've really experienced Jesus it's like nobody can tell you anything that's going to convince you otherwise because you you know and and when you know like that you don't feel the need to like get loud or defend or argue or stuff like this because you just have a peace in knowing the truth that you know yeah yeah <laughs> um, I, I had it, this a little bit to be honest because I was so I, w- I like some people of friends of my new uh, um, of the new age I love them so much and I was like I want them to come to Jesus so at the beginning I think I was maybe too 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 pushy I think yeah because I, w- I just want them to be safe, but I know, yes. I know I know the Lord is gonna bring them. To- I just know now. I just know. I, I planted the seeds, and I just know. Like even people, even a friend of mine back in the day, she blocked me, and I keep praying for her, and I fasted for her, and I just know she's gonna come to. G- I just know it. I just know it. And um, and when she blocked me, I didn't even feel offended or anything. I was just praying for her. And I remember being in the new age. You always think you're so empathic and you so much love and light, but as soon as you don't agree with your opinion or anything it's more you know normally you're just cursing people in the new age you're like oh I'm so empathic I'm so love and light but as soon as you come to Jesus they really like Phew. you know and then it's like oh yeah I thought you're so empathic and you're so love and light you know then yeah well it's personal <laughs> like when when you're counting on yourself for that like evolution in consciousness when you're when you're seeking all that within yourself it's it is personal when somebody doesn't agree or anything like this, but when you're a believer in Christ and a believer in the Bible and what God says, it's not personal anymore. It's like they're coming against God. It has nothing to do with with you. You're just a messenger. Yeah, yeah. And uh yeah, and this is I finally found my purpose in life because I was always I was always trying to seek it in the new age, you know, with healing people, but I just know now that Jesus is the solution for everything in your life. You know, like we have this God uh, shaped hole inside of us because it is created for us to seek God. And we try to look in the world to uh, fill that void, you know, with money, with people, relationships, success and everything. But it's never enough. You know, it's, even when you even when you're at that point of like spirituality of like oh, okay this is my ego um and just have to you know being like being grateful for where i am there's still emptiness inside of you like if you're honest to yourself you're still seeking you know even though you kind of have maybe some peace in your life but there's still something missing and that's jesus and uh mm-hmm. yeah no one can like I, I i can understand that some people are like oh yeah miri has the next trip and next it's like uh you know islam or anything but i'm like no it's it's gonna be jesus like forever yeah. you know, until i die and uh, yeah. i just know that he's the truth and that he can set you free immediately from anything you're suffering from you know you don't need to go outside and like look for some gurus or books or anything to pay a lot of money for that you can just go in prayer and seek seek god and like just give yeah. your whole heart to Jesus and he's going to heal you from that. And it's like so profound, like what he can do for you, and like yeah. how much he can change you. And, and uh, even, you know, the relationships I have with my family and 
I just know that God, like all the misery I had is turning now into God's glory. Like he uses everything for his mm. glory. And like, even for me using for the fam, for my family to, you know, tell my grandma about Jesus, my grandpa, like to tell everyone about Jesus, even though some might, some don't like to hear it, but I just know that God's using me to even bring my family to Christ and like to save them because, um, there's so much truth in the new age, but the devil doesn't want us to come to Jesus because with Jesus, we have like um, the salvation of our souls and it's about eternal life. Yeah. The new age can bring you some satisfaction or maybe help you becoming successful or like manifest or something like that. But what happens when you die? You know, hell, hell is real and heaven as well. And like, if you don't have Jesus, you're going to hell. So it's not about that. Like, oh, I did so many good things. No, you need Jesus. Because we, in our nature, we all, like, we sinned. We all sinned. We can never be perfect. Like, we all sinned in our lives. And we need Jesus. Like, Jesus washed me clean from everything I did. Like, I brought, like, every sin I had, I brought, him to, I brought it to the cross. And I just, he forgave me everything. And it was so freeing. Like, I never felt so clear and so free in myself. Mm. I'm curious, life. those gifts that you were because you you have these spiritual gifts and you know like we talked about how satan tried to hijack them and use them for his kingdom has god began to show you how to use those gifts now in his kingdom yeah yeah he did i always felt like there was something in my hand so i always felt like oh yeah and even in the new age people would tell me yeah oh, you're going to become a healer you're, like even my astrology because you're virgo and virgo is related to healing so there was always some truth about this so i was like yeah like i feel energy in my hand so but now it's like i had pain in my in my knee and i just laid hands on it and prayed in the name of jesus and after one minute it just disappeared <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> It's not, it's not, it didn't return like was like weeks ago and I just know now that yeah like even when I pray for someone in the name of Jesus like all glory to God but if I pray to someone like immediately like something like something bad like spiritual leaves them like there's so much power in the name of Jesus and um yeah just walking in this authority and just bringing people to Christ and it's like yeah that's the most fulfilling thing you could ever have it's yeah yeah not no money can pay you this. That's, I love that you said that too, because it really does. Like you go around paying for all these things in the new age, like paying for this service and this reading and this psychic. And, and yeah, you don't have to pay for the Holy Spirit. Like that's just, it's not how that works. <laughs> yeah. And it's, God has a plan and God knows better than we do. And we always think like we, I was so stubborn. I always knew, uh, thought like, oh, I knew better. I know what I want in life. But everything I got, it was like, it was like, it was not of God. Every relationship, nothing of this was ever like God's will. Yeah. But if you come to Jesus, like you're really surrendering. Like that's really the ego death. Like you give your life to Christ. And um, if you declare, it's written in the Bible, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and he died for you and he, um, he um, rose up again at the third day. Like this is when you receive the Holy Spirit. And um, that day you just want to do how God wants you to live. You want to live how God wants you to live. And this is so fulfilling. It give, brings me so much joy to live holy in God's eyes and to follow his will and not my will anymore and to be obedient to him. And uh brings you so much more peace still there are challenge challenges coming but i know now god's just doing it to prepare me to shape my character it's like i have a whole different mindset right now because all of these things are coming like attacks or anything i just know this is coming to to grow me in my in my right. my purpose god has for me so it's so different right now like really god gives you a new heart it's saying that he took out the heart of, of stone and gives you a heart of flesh and he's yeah. totally renewing your mind. It's really like God like just took my brain and took all of this garbage and all of this negative stuff we come completely out of my brain and just my my head is filled now with you know God's word and like how he you know, thinks about me like just some positive positive things and it's like you just get a completely new person, completely new like you're one hundred percent one hundred and eighty degree change, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is he working on you? now with because like you said it, well it's like you know you're saved and that that happens in a moment it seems like but then the journey of sanctification is over a lifetime and I like to how you said that uh it's like struggles still come but it's different now like like for every for every pain for every struggle you have 
you have a hope in it and you know that he's preparing you, he's refining you. Um, so what would you say? And you don't have to share too deep, but like, what is he, what is he teaching you right now? Right now? I can't tell like what he was teaching me a couple of weeks ago. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, my cat died. I think it was one month ago. And it was like really, like it was so painful. It was so painful because before I knew Jesus, my cat was the only, not human being, but the only being that gave me unconditional love. So my cat was like also like, we so we were so dependent on each other. So my cat was my everything. So my cat was kind of my idol. Mm. So um, I always had her. And then even when I was alone at, the, at my house and my father was at his girlfriend's place, um, I had my cat. So now, like even though I had a, a pen, I like, had a sleep paralysis or anything, I would have my cat and I would feel safe. Mm-hmm. And when my cat died, I felt so much pain. I felt so bad, and this triggered like the death of my mom again. And I totally surrendered to Jesus, and I really cried out to Jesus. I was like, "Okay, I want to know you more. I want more for you. I want to know you better." And I kind of got convicted of like, "Okay, my cat was totally my idol, and now Jesus, you're you're first in my life." Wow. And um, he took all the pain and now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sad anymore. And this is just one month ago. And I was like, wow, like back in the day, you know, because of my mother's death, I, I suffered for almost five years, for more than five years. And now it's like one month and I don't even, some, maybe there's going to come a day when I look at, see a picture and maybe I cry again, but it's like, I'm not thinking about it anymore. I'm not um, depressed anymore about it. Like, yeah. God, God took all the pain straight away and like show, just showed me like now is the time to just focus on Jesus because my cat was always the reason I wouldn't uh, travel for so long because I was so oh, I can't leave her alone I have to go back home so it was kind of like holding me back a little bit of like yeah. just going out and like not being so dependent on staying here at home so God just showed me like um, to just rely on him that he provides for me and that if he wants me to go to some place tomorrow I'm just gonna go there yeah. and uh, to not be like oh no but my cat you know so yeah yeah this is what he he showed me uh, like one month ago like five weeks ago and um yeah now now it was like having totally forgiveness like um f- for example for my ex I had still some kind of bitterness in my heart and I totally like a couple of days ago I got convicted of that and I was crying and I gave it to Jesus and then I felt God's presence in the room and like again it was like pfft, like my god yeah it was like I was laying in bed and I felt like I was like just laying on a cloud and the angels in the room and God was there and I was just fell asleep and then the next morning I would if if I woke up again I would just feel different again like in a positive way like there's some shifting right now so I don't know like God really want I know that God wants me to go around to share my testimony and to also help like younger people like younger women who are in the new age but I don't know yet. Like I'm just gonna surrender to God what He's planning for me. Like maybe I come next month to Florida. I know I will, I'm gonna come to Florida okay. next month. And I'm so excited for this because yeah, just like I, two days ago, I also cried to God, like God, please show me what Your destiny is for me because I want to fulfill it. Because if I die, I don't want to stand in front of You and You sh- telling me actually that You had plans for me and I just didn't do it and I didn't yeah. follow You. So it was like I have this positive pressure of like doing as much as I can as long this uh, this earth still exists mm, you know, about, i don't know if you ever read like revelation like i have read it like three times now and about the rapture and everything but it's surreal and this yeah. is why i want to save as as many souls as i can like bring people to christ and yeah yeah that's so good well that brings me into my last question and that would be what your advice would be if you were to go back to yourself then when you were seeking and you were lost and and you were restless or you know somebody somebody who can relate to to where you were before you found Christ what would your advice be um God is always with you and you have to seek him it is written that you have to seek him and uh, knock and he will open the door and he's not really seeking you but you have to seek him Mm. so uh, even like when you when you say oh I don't feel God's presence, it's not because God is leaving you, but because you kind of like leaving Him and that not focusing on Him anymore. Because if you close, if you tr- if you um, draw closer to Him, then He will also draw closer to you. So um, I would tell my old self that you're safe, 
and that God is always with you and you just have to go into prayer and seek for him. Like now I know that everything I've been through, it was for the good because now I just know that everything else just a counterfeit. So I'm grateful to have all of this, this experience of like ayahuasca of all, because I tried everything and I just know it's not the truth. Yeah. So um, now I'm, I'm grateful that I've been through all of this to see that how fulfilling Jesus is and how mm-hmm. he can change your life and that he's the way, the truth and the life and uh, that you need him to come to God and to have eternal life. And yeah, uh, yeah to everyone who's feeling empty or desperate of, or feeling, uh, if you feel like you're still seeking and there's still emptiness inside of you, go on your knees and go into prayer and ask for Jesus to reveal yourself to you. And if he's truth, like I, I, I even asked, I think I was just like, Jesus, are you really, are you really real? Like, please show me. Yeah. So I was, I was, I was open for it, but I wasn't like, oh, Jesus, show me. I was more like, if you're really real, like show me. And then I, I had the Holy Spirit coming upon me. Like I was, you really have to be like, um, cried your whole heart for him. And then he will, he will come and he will, he will Mm -hmm. save you. I prayed that. I prayed that too. And he did. He revealed himself after I asked. So yeah, I think all you have to do is ask and and he does. He wants to reveal himself to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And after that, everything changes. Like I can tell you, like, er, like everything that was not of God, like God took everything out of my life and it was important. It was so important. It was so important. Mm. Do you have anything else? I just pray for everyone right now seeing this that you're open to just pray and seek seek Jesus and start reading the Bible and if you start read the uh, the New Testament first and um, yeah ask and you will receive like I can just tell that Jesus is the truth and he's totally changing your life and he will give you everything you ever wanted like it's written like um, Matthew 6 33 like seek his kingdom first and everything else will be added to you like yeah. this is the of your heart if you just focus on Jesus like God will provide for you financially with, with everything God will send you people to love you don't need to force anything anymore you don't need to figure it out you don't need to rely on your own understanding anymore because you have God and yeah amen thank, thank you, you so much for being on the show today Miriam you're welcome thank you for having me <laughs> That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this show, I'd love to have you leave a review, share it with a friend, and even connect with me on other platforms. It's at Michaela Nicolenko on Instagram and TikTok. And we also have an at Raised and Redeemed Instagram account too. I look forward to connecting with you there. Until next time, stay well and God bless you.